So guys, I'm from the future. I'm from the end of the video. We just had a super lit time. We unboxed the Apple Watch 4. We unboxed the iPhone XS Max, which I'm recording on right now. We unboxed some accessories for the iPhone XS Max here, uh, here. We compared the iPhone XS Max to the iPhone 7 Plus and Apple Watch 2 just to look at the screen and how much it's improved. Here is the box for the Apple Watch and here's the box for the iPhone. Keep in mind, this camera right here I'm recording on is the iPhone XS Max camera, so that is awesome. Yeah, so definitely stick around. We are gonna have a crazy long video, so get some popcorn, get some candy, get some soda, get some water if you're healthy, and let's get started. So obviously, this video is gonna be like the ultimate <laughs> unboxing. It's not just a normal unboxing, it's not an iPhone, it's not an Apple Watch, it's not accessories. It is all of it together. So be prepared to sit here for a while. Like, you better get a snack, get some popcorn, get some water get some Fanta, get some Starbucks, whatever, because we have the iPhone 6, 6, no. We have the iPhone 10s Max right here. This is the 256 gigabyte variant in gold. I'm gonna talk about why I picked it during the unboxing. And then I have the Apple Watch Series 4. This is the space gray slash aluminum case with just the black sports band. I definitely wanna get some more colors. And then I have the iPhone 10s max leather case right here i typically go with the saddle brown leather but i was feeling blue this time and then you gotta do fast charging with the iphone it's the biggest scam like they need to include it in the box but i also had to get some accessories to fast charge so i will discuss that as well next i got the mophie um, wireless charging pad which basically what it does, it will charge at 10 watts, so it will charge faster than the normal, typical five watt chargers. Also, I've heard that the iPhone 10s and 10s Max charges faster via wireless charging, but I don't really know if it's physically faster charging or that because the 10s has a smaller battery than the 10, it just inherently will charge faster. That, I don't know, but we'll take a, take a look at it. And last but not least um, is the Nomad um, base station. So what I'm probably gonna do with this is put at uh, my bed, my nightstand. So it's very easy at night just to plug in my phone and plug in my Apple Watch. So this is here. It definitely has some benefits versus some of the cheaper ones. So I will mention that as we unbox them. And that is really it as far as introductions go. So let's get started. Like, honestly, like we're gonna go in proper order that we would set it up. Like you can't unbox the Apple Watch first because we need the phone to set it up. So what I will do is not keep you guys waiting. I'm gonna put everything to the side and we're gonna go right for the iPhone first. Alrighty, so we got to do the pull tab. I'm gonna put it close to my microphone so you can get that AMS ASMR going on. I think that sounded good. Here's the plastic. Don't need that. Here we go. Well, let's take a look at the box. Obviously, we know it's in an iPhone, so I don't want to waste my time on it. But it does have the gold accents because it's the gold iPhone XS Max. Very cool. Are we ready? Typical paperwork designed by Apple in California. We have the iPhone right here. Ooh, this is bougie. I can see myself in that. <laughs> Look at that. Look how reflective that is. That's cool. And honestly, we know what's in the box. We've seen it before. We have the um, ear pods. Don't get these confused with AirPods, even though you would think they are AirPods that the way they are presented, but they're not. The cord is just folded up behind them. Has anyone ever mentioned this on an unboxing, like how much of a scam this is? Like this is an AirPod right here, and then this is the ear pod. 
So th the way that they package them, it looks like they're wireless, but they're really not. There's a cord in there. Um, and then of course we have just the normal lightning cable right here, which if you're an Apple lover like me, you probably have a ton of these. And then we have the, I believe this is five watt. Yep, so this is the little five watt power brick, which in 2018 is useless. <laughs> that's, that's, it's just a little irritating. Like as much as I do love Apple products, the iPhone XS Max is a, what, a, like, on average like a $1,200 device and they give us this crap from like 2012. So then I have to go out and buy these other accessories to properly fast charge it. When these accessories should be in the box, I don't know. Apple really does nickel and dime you, like their products are amazing, but you gotta be prepared to spend that Apple tax, like for real. So I'm gonna put all the accessories back in the box because honestly, um, when the next iPhone comes out, I'm gonna resell this. So having all the accessories in perfect condition will make the resell value better. So that's a little life hack for you guys. So we're going to save this box, put it right here to the side, and let's do some more ASMR. We're gonna pull this off. Very nice. Oh, look, it's, <laughs> it's stuck to me. Man, this thing is like not as bad as a fingerprint magnet as the dark one that I had, but it, I feel like it's still gonna be bad. But this thing is pretty, and like, is this the 10S Max? Like this doesn't feel very big in my hand at all. Did I order the right one? Like, <laughs> it's very weird because I went from the iPhone 10 to the Galaxy Note 9 to the BlackBerry Key 2. So I'm like used to bigger sizes. Um, let me see. Here is my Note 9 for a comparison. So they're about the same size. Even though the um, iPhone has a 0.1 uh, inch bigger display, but it's actually not as tall. But it is, and it's actually like the same width maybe a little bit skinnier. But of course the iPhone XS Max has smaller bezels. And guys, you don't know how excited I am to switch to this iPhone because I have been using the BlackBerry Key 2 as my daily driver for a little bit now. And yeah, like the keyboard's pretty cool and it's like a great throwback, but the camera isn't very good. The keyboard, uh, physical keyboards aren't really good for this day and age with multimedia consumption. Gonna make a review on this device, but I'm definitely taking my SIM card out today or activating the iPhone. So we're gonna power on the iPhone. Hopefully it's got some battery. Okay, while that power's on, what we're gonna do is get the case out. Like God forbid a tree falls on my office and I drop my iPhone and it breaks. I didn't get no Apple Care, so I ain't trying to pay for no replacement. So here is the leather case. This is the Cape Cod Blue, I believe. Yep, um, leather Cape Cod Blue case. It has, it, it's really strange, like it doesn't have that leather, leather smell. It has like a paint, like a paint chemical smell. So hopefully that wears away, but it still feels like really good. It has like the smooth material on the inside, like leathery like Alcantara feel and then the outside is just leather. I'm very curious to see how this thing wears over time. I, obviously it will get dark and show some signs of wear. I just hopefully it doesn't get too nasty. But you know if I don't like the case I can just get another one. It's not that big a deal. Okay it says if you have an iPhone iPad running iOS 11 or later please bring your bike to sign in automatically. But I don't really know like the settings up there, if they're um, up to date with all my logins. So I'm just gonna set up automatically or manually really quick. And I guess what I'll do as well, I'm going to power off my Blackberry. I don't know if it matters, but typically when you order a phone, like an iPhone, it will come with a new SIM card and you can just activate it. So I think that's what's gonna happen, we'll see. 
Um, maybe not. I don't know. We'll try putting my SIM card in later if we need to. So first things first, we need to set up Face ID. So we've all seen this before. Position within the frame. Move your head slowly to complete the circle. And Face ID is supposed to be like 15% faster in this phone versus the normal 10. Face ID set up, so like that was super easy. And we're gonna make a passcode. Okay. So basically when I set it up, I had to use my iMac to verify it's me with the code. I have um, an iPad, but it's in my living room and I'm lazy. So that's the benefit of having multiple Apple devices. You don't have to leave your room. Do you want to use Jeremy's Apple Watch with this phone? No, because Jeremy's Apple Watch is the Apple Watch Series 2 in the back. So we're not gonna set that up. We're gonna set that up later. Screen time report, yes. Share with developers, True Tone Display. Yeah, it's really crazy. Like the True Tone Display, um, it's not new to this phone, but I love it because it will make the screen like more pleasing to your eye based on the color temperature of the lighting we're in. So right now I have like studio lights at like around 5,000 Kelvin. So the screen's a little yellow, like, cause I like that look on me. It makes my skin tone looks a little bit more natural, but you can kind of see what happens when we turn the true tone display off, it makes it way more white, which is more like true to like life. But true tone, just like once you get used to it, it's really cool. Don't edit like pictures or video with it if you're going to, um, more so use it to consume media versus creating media. And I have a um, Apple, my Apple ID and my iTunes like, ID are different so it's pretty cool that it knew that so I basically put in my other password so I have one login for the App Store and then one login for my iCloud which I don't know why I did that it was a little bit annoying but yeah whatever so it's restoring from iCloud it says time remaining estimating so I have no idea how long this is gonna take so you guys can kind of see it. The bar is going, so we're good there. I ain't got time to wait, so let's multitask while it sets up. Let's take a look at some of the other accessories. We're gonna go with the ones that make the most sense first. Case, we're done with. Which, no, no need to take up room. I'll throw that box aside. Um, so let's take a look at the charging accessories for the iPhone. So first thing I got was this is interesting. Um, you all know that you can get like third party Apple accessories. Ooh, we can open this. Some little ASMR. But um, yeah, like a lot of accessories you can get third party. You don't have to spend the Apple tax for the most part. But the USB C to Lightning is only developed by Apple right now, so you cannot get it anywhere else. And you need the USB C to Lightning. And this is really hard to open. You need the USB-C to Lightning to do fast charging on the iPhone 10, the iPhone 8, the iPad Pro. I thought I would just break down and get it because I do have like a lot of Apple devices and I'm sure this will work for generations to come. So I just like splurged on it. It is, it is ridiculous because you know, you think, hey, I can go out and buy a charging brick. That's all I need. No, like Apple, is all about nickel and diming you because you have to buy two separate things. You have to buy the charging brick and you have to buy the cable. So they're all about like those add-ons. And honestly, right now during like iPhone time, these things are gonna sell out at a lot of places. So if you can't find them, just wait. Or you can actually find, you can find third party power bricks that work with this, but you can't find third party cables right now as of um, what month is it? <laughs> September. Wait, what? Is this September? Yeah, September 2018. I'm going crazy. Okay, so here is the power brick. It's almost covered in like wax paper. And here is the cable. 
This is like the, what size cable is this? This is the one meter cable, so it's not very big at all. Like you can, it fits in the in size of the screen. Like there you can see it is right there. But the power brick, it is a little bit bigger than what I'm used to. That's what she said. So here's that. And we can compare it if you want to really quick because we're waiting. Now the iPhone says 17 minutes remaining. So here is the, the, one, the upgraded one versus the normal one that comes with the box. So it's much bigger. And also too guys, I noticed that the one in the box, like the material, that is, it seems the same material. It's like this paper, so it's not really plastic. I think I heard that Apple is like committing to better packaging materials. So, I mean, I welcome that. If they want to wrap the whole freaking phone in newspaper, I really don't care at the end of the day. If we can do whatever we can to help the environment, that's great. So, the cable, how this works, it has a USB-C cable. So the USB-C is like the same USB-C that you're familiar with like on a Galaxy Note or your um, MacBook Pro. So you plug that right into the brick and then you plug the lightning into the phone and it will fast charge. So that's great. I will definitely be making a video like more in depth on some iPhone accessories and I will go into how much faster this charges compared to the normal power brick. But that would make it for a very long video if we went that in depth today. So just wanna show you like why I bought it. It's to charge faster. Um, and I will have links to everything I've talked about in the description below. So definitely um, check those out if you're interested. 14 minutes left on the iCloud backup, so that's a little disappointing, but we'll keep on going. Uh, let's see, so here's the, uh, the Mophie charger. Yeah, this is gonna be a bad unboxing because I'm not patient. I'm just gonna rip it. Can't return it now. Yep, we ripped the whole box. So here is the Mophie plate right here. It's very simple in a way. Okay. So it's got a little um, quick start guide, which we're not gonna read because it's about a freaking charger. Don't need any of this. And so for some reason I thought this came with a proprietary charger. So it is cool to see a micro USB cable. Like it's a very quality cable, but my beef is like if they're gonna have like an official Apple accessory, which I know it's not official official, but it's like made for the iPhone. Why wouldn't it be lightning? Or why wouldn't it be USB-C at least? Like micro USB, like come on. Micro USB is so old. I've just been getting like so many different cables for micro USB. I'm gonna have so much trash in the corner of my room. Um, so it is a little weird to see micro USB for a premium Apple product. The cable is really nice though. Like it's really thick and like rubbery and feels good. The power brick, oop. Uh, uh, that sound i bet you sounds good oh yeah so we have that and i'm about to plug the this into that i'm too tired and then we have to plug this in well that's a really deep hole like look at this um cable this is the most like proprietary cable i've ever seen like you see the design of it and how it has that shape. The hole is like really deep. I don't know if you can see it. And like the way it fits in, it's like perfectly made for it. So I don't know if other cables would fit, but that's nice. So here it is right here. I have it plugged in. It says one minute on the iCloud and now it's charging. So that's pretty cool. So let's let it charge while we're doing the rest. I don't really want to do the Apple Watch yet until we get the iPhone set up. Alrighty, it's doing something, it's loading after I finish the backup. 
So while it's doing that, let's check out the... We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because we haven't opened the Apple Watch yet, but at least this will be relevant for the iPhone 2 in the meantime. Um, so this thing, it was a little pricey. I think it was like $80. But the thing to keep in mind is you don't have to route any cables. A lot of these cheaper stands that you get on Amazon, you have to route like your existing cables through it. So if you want to get this base to, you know, have like free up your other cable, if you want to get a cheaper base to free up your other cables, that's not the case. You still have to use those. Whereas this base is so much cleaner, like you just plug one plug in and it will charge your phone and your Apple Watch at the same time and it's very clean. So it's very nice for like your bed stand because you don't have to use too many plugs. And I'm struggling to open this. I'll use the SIM card ejector tool. It's like a good shank. Oh yeah, that's like nice. I don't know if I'm supposed to pull this, this and that's how you get it out or what? I'm a bad unboxer. So there's everything. Nice box. So some important things to note on this, on why it's good quality. So obviously it supports both size Apple watches. It make, it supports the iPhone as well, but it's also case compatible. Um, and then also you don't need any ca uh, cables. And you can adjust the lightning connector so it works with or without a case. And yeah, let's just take a look. Let's not read the BS box and let's take a look for ourselves. The packaging, like it's not really next to level like I would expect. Like this plastic seems a little outdated for a premium product, I don't know. I'm being picky. I guess it's kind of hard to package something that's not just like a flat brick. Ooh, okay. We got a little thing in here that says Nomad. My phone's doing something. <gasps> My phone is on. Okay, so the high level works with iPhone case, normal level works without iPhone case. So you can see that right there. It just talks about the charger and it's flexible. Okay. And this padding, I can appreciate it's like nice and squishy. It's really nice. It's really nice. And just to make sure you don't forget, here's another little notice about adjusting the levels. So here it is right here. The level on the, the switch on the bottom, it moves it moves this up and down. So like, it just depends. And you can also, like it's made, it's like, it's got a spring. So it'll work with a bunch of different devices. First impressions, this thing screams quality. The bottom is like this rubber material. So it grips like, that's tight. That ain't, <laughs> that ain't going nowhere. Um, and then the same rubbers on the top and on the sides. And it just has like this aluminum feel so it feels kind of like just the same material that my iMac or um, iPad is made out of. Very good quality. Kind of definitely mimics the iPhone design language. So that's great. And just Nomad, the reason I picked this charger, for one, it's like not one of the bigger companies. So I'm all about supporting like the smaller companies that are good quality. Like I don't want to just support like Best Buy's generic brand or you know, if I can stay away from getting all Apple products, um, I'll do that as well, if they're good. I mean, you saw that I got everything else Apple, but when we can go third party and it's good, we will. The only bad thing about this third party cable, this third party accessory is this cable. It's like this, not proprietary cable, but it's just like, this type of plug, so you're not gonna really have many of these lying around, if any. I gotta do that beauty guru thing so it focuses. It's like that type of plug. Okay. So basically you just plug that into the back and then you can charge both of your devices. But we will test this out in a little bit when we get the iPhone and the Apple Watch completely set up. 
So we're gonna set that to the side. I'm gonna throw away some more trash off this table. Okay, let's take a look at the iPhone where we're at. Okay, so, <laughs> I mean, this is pretty crazy because it's set up the same way my iPhone 10 was, as far as like the way I had it set up. It's somewhat sloppy, somewhat not sloppy, I don't know. And you can see it's downloading everything right now. The stuff that's grayed out is not working yet, obviously. Um, it's very strange, like, it's hard to explain. I was used to the small size of the iPhone 10, going to the, um, the Note 9, and then coming back, like, I, my mind knows it's different, but to me, like, it's not bad. Just because um, Apple did such a good job, like, you know, with the screen to body ratio, yeah, this is good. I can deal with this. It does say no service though, so we need to check that out. I don't know if a SIM card was not put in here or if it's not activated or what. So we gotta take off the case, unfortunately. That is like such a pretty color. It's not really a color like I would use, but still it's bougie. It's something different too. Like, honestly, why buy the same color every time? As a, you know, a reviewer, I want to experience the new colors, so I might as well. It does have a SIM card, guys, but it might not have been activated. But my other SIM card for sure was activated on my BlackBerry Key 2. So this is the official inaugural switch of the daily drivers. Let's not mess up mix up my SIM cards. And it is a micro SIM, I believe. So if you have like an older phone with, no, it's a nano SIM. So if you have like a normal SIM card or a micro SIM card, whatever they're called, this is like the smallest of the bunch. So just remember that if you have a really old phone, you may need to go get a new SIM card. Okay. Hopefully that works. Yep, we got some bars. So guys, this may be stupid, but I mentioned that one of my big reasons for going to iOS is um, using iMessage. So I have a lot of friends and family that use iMessage. It's just a much better experience to, to communicate on for me. I know a lot of people will not you know, believe me. They think it's a stupid reason, an iSheep reason, but I like it. I even got my first message. I'm gonna text my mom and my two sisters. I'm gonna say, hey, got iMessage back. First message on new phone. Y'all in video, lol. <laughs> Let's take a selfie to send to them, oh my God. They'll be so lit. Wait, they'll be so shook. I don't even know how to use proper words. Um, so we're gonna go in here. We're gonna take a selfie with portrait mode to see how that changed. We'll do it this way. We'll make it bigger. And then we can of course like in portrait mode, edit it. You can, so you can edit the f-stop. So basically what that does, it makes it less blurry or you can make the f-stop lower, which makes it real blurry. And like f4 is probably good. Yeah, like f1.4 is so simulated. f4 is great. And then you can do the studio lights, you can do contour, stage light, which sucks. You can see it cut off my finger. Stage light mono, again, sucks. Studio light is typically my favorite. It brightens up your face a little bit. So I'm gonna send that. Yeah, this is this is what we text about. This is the importance of iMessage for sure. Okay, so that's all set up. Apparently the updating is paused right now because, oh my God, now they're blowing me up. So I'm gonna put this on do not disturb right now for a second. Um, what do we need to do? It said the updating is paused because the battery life, I guess maybe went underneath 75% or something. I can't even plug in this cable right now because it's so short. I don't think it will do, it won't, I don't think it will reach. Nope, I need a bigger cable. So yeah, we're gonna plug my iPhone 
and and since it has the case we do need to raise it up so great feature there thanks for thinking of that it was a little hard to find the hole at first but that's charging so yeah i think we are in business um i would definitely want to check out some more features on the iphone in a second but i'm going to let it do its thing um let it update and stuff we're gonna definitely test out the iPhone a lot more in this video. We're gonna do like take some videos, some pictures. Um, but right now we're just gonna let it do its thing for a little bit. I'm going to unbox the Apple Watch next, but I have to give my camera a little break because my Sony RX100 Mark V, even though I'm recording in 1080p, it says it's overheating, which is annoying, and the battery is dying, whereas my Canon camera that I'm filming with right now is a beast and has tons of battery left and no problems with overheating. Now that we have my iPhone somewhat set up, it's still downloading a lot of stuff, we are ready to do the Apple Watch, which honestly, the Apple Watch fourth generation is probably my most anticipated device from Apple this year. The fact that it's like finally redesigned like we have a bigger screen less bezels so it kind of like mirrors the design language of the iphone 10. i'm really excited and what we're going to do so we can test out the recording quality of the iphone 10 s max we're going to record a third um angle using this little crazy setup right here so what i'm going to do is set this up so we got the iphone 10 recording right there Okay, so we have this little pull tab right here. I want to get it on video, but I also want you all to hear it too. Did I just fail? I don't know. What the heck? Is that how you do it? I don't know. That felt weird. That didn't feel, that didn't feel natural. So we have like these... What are these? Okay, I'm a little confused what's going on right now. What the heck, look at this. Ooh, this is cool. So like the inside of it looks like this. Can you see it, can you see it, can you see it? So it's like just like a paper, which again, it feels like more just recyclable materials, which I will recycle. I like that art though. It shows all the different watch um, bands for that. So here we have the sports band. I'm gonna tease y'all a little bit longer and we're gonna open this first. How do I open it? Is there any way to open this precisely? Yeah, there we go. Ooh, there we go. That's cool. So basically it has a medium and large size and a small size, but then this size is the same. I'm typically small, and I don't know, maybe I'm like thick and didn't realize it. So we'll see what we do there. But we gotta check out this watch. Oh my God, what's going on? This happened too quick. So what's underneath here? So we have, again, another power brick. So it, it has this like paper on it. Can you guys see this? It has this like paper on it right there. So again, it's like more recycled materials. And then we have the charger, which seems to just be the normal Apple Watch charger. It doesn't seem to be different to me. Like I said before, I'm going to just keep the, the accessories in there. If I don't need to use them, it makes the resell value better if I want to sell it in the future. Ooh, this is crazy. Was this on the old Apple Watches? My Series 2 did not have this. This has like some bougie like felt thing. This is cool. Oh my gosh. That's neat. <laughs> And then here's the Apple Watch itself. Wow, and like the back of it is a lot different than the Series 2. 
It has all these different sensors. That's, this is the Series 2 right here, and then this is the Series 4. So yeah, a little bit different looking. It's kind of like crazy futuristic. And guys, too, before this video is over, I do want to show like the differences of the Apple Watch version 2 versus the version 4, and then also the iPhone 7 Plus versus the iPhone XS Max. Because it's very interesting because they're like the same size, but there's so much more screen real estate. So it's a really good comparison. It says, bring iPhone near Apple Watch. I don't know if this will pair while it's recording or not. No, let me stop this. Okay, you, it says, use your iPhone to set up this Apple Watch, continue. Honestly, lightly, I work in a bank and I'm lazy, so we'll start lightly. We'll get low and, heart, and high heart rate not notifications. Apple Pay. And I don't know, set up later. Emergency SOS, install available apps, install all. Apple Watch is syncing. Your Apple Watch is almost ready. You'll get an alert when it's done syncing, so you can use your iPhone as you normally would. Okay guys, so just keep in mind, right now I'm filming with the iPhone XS Max. This is what it looks like. It honestly feels really good on the, on the wrist, like the silicone band, it doesn't grab your hair. It's very smooth and soft. It will be great for working out. The watch feels like it's not too heavy, it's not too light, it just feels good. Uh, let's see, don't hack me. So obviously you can change some of the watch faces. Vapor. These are some of the, this is the newer watch faces I heard about. Pretty nifty, it makes really good use of the OLED screen because it's just black. So like the haptic feel feels really good. Like when you move the digital crown, you feel the haptic feedback that's so good in the iPhones and Apple Watches. Like it feels like the crown is ticking. And honestly, like this isn't something I can just show you guys like really quick what this thing does. I just wanna mess with it for a few days to get a really good indication. But obviously you can add alarms, which is really good. Let's check our heart rate. 83 beats per minute. I'm gonna die. Oh, but I did say I would compare the watch to the Apple Watch version two. So here is the version two and here is the four. So they kind of made, made their backgrounds all good for hiding the bezel because it's black all the way around it. But you can clearly tell like this has the bigger screen. And you can also get watch faces that hide the bezel completely as well. So that's, look at that. Like I'm really impressed by this screen. Like the animation on that combined with the OLED, that's really cool to look at. That's sweet. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this back on. And I, guys, I honestly do want to get some different watch bands. I want to get the Cape Cod Blue that matches my case. They have a leather one, and they also have just like a workout like um, material type band. I want to get one of those. But um, if I ordered it from Apple, it wasn't going to arrive in time for my video, so it's irrelevant. Um, but yeah, I really like this. Let's also take a look at the comparison between the iPhone 7 Plus and the iPhone XS Max because they're the same physical size almost, but the screen is insanely different. So here's the difference. You can see they're about the same size. Like the iPhone 7 Plus fits in it a little bit, but they're basically the same size in hand. So if you had an iPhone 7 Plus or 8 Plus, the upgrade won't really seem like much of a difference. But look at that screen difference. These bezels on the iPhone 7 Plus are just wasted screen real estate on the top and the bottom. And then on the X or the XS, the XS Max, it just makes so much better use of the screen so it's a 6.5 inch screen, which is insane. So guys, last but not least, we have a company called Tolly Case. 
totally cakes. I don't know if I, am I saying that right? I have no idea. But what I really like about these cases, they seem very minimal, like the packaging I love. It's just very like no nonsense and just in a little plastic container. And they even sent me a nice little note. Hi Jeremy, here's our signature ultra thin cases for the new generation of iPhones. Hopefully this is of interest to you and your fans. So there's that. Very nice. If companies send me a little gift, a little note like that, I definitely take notice. So thank you for that, Jenna. And I will put links, like I said, to everything in the description below, even to these cases. And as I get more accessories in for the iPhone from other companies, I'll definitely be doing videos on those as well. So here is one of them. Ooh. This is kind of cool. So here's what this case looks like. It is so like, wow. This is, if you want like basically a skin for your phone, but a little bit more protection, this will be perfect. Like this will keep scratches off the back of your phone and it will keep scratches off the rails, which do scratch a lot, but it's not gonna be drop proof at all. Like, look at this. This is crazy though. Like, I wanna see what this looks like on my phone. This might look amazing with the gold. We're gonna set that to side and we're gonna do a close up. I think this might actually be for the iPhone XS. Yeah. It's just very minimal, very tiny. Like this is basically a skin. And let's check out this one. Ooh, these are, oh, this is the, um, oh, we got that exclusive access. So this is for the um, iPhone 10 XR, 10, iPhone XR. I don't know. I can't remember, but that's what this is for. I can tell by the, the, the way the camera is. But I'm really loving like the super minimalistic. Like this feels like it's made like out of a piece of like recycled plastic. I wonder if it is. It says it's a uh, California based, which I like. So let me um, put this on. I can't get over how freaking cool this is, this color. Like I may wanna use this case every now and then because it might show off the color. It's like frosted glass. I mean, it's plastic, but it's like frosted. It's so like, you see what I'm talking about? It's so see-through. So basically all it does, it just makes the gold a lot more subtle so it's not super flashy. It makes the gold kind of like a matte color. And then there's what it looks like on the front. But the gold buttons, it doesn't protect those at all. So they really stand out. I don't know how well guys you can see the buttons, but they contrast really good because they stick out and they're shiny. And then the power button shiny as well. The only thing I'm noticing, like it feels a little bit like when you pull on the side, it doesn't hug it like really tight. Like look right here. It just kind of like is very, I don't know, like it's up there, but if you move it a little bit, it comes off, but I don't know. Like when you hold it like this, it's not going to slide out or anything. It just feels a little bit loose, like a tiny bit loose. But also that probably has something to do with, like this case is so, well, now I'm having a hard time getting it off. So I guess that says something good. It won't come off easily. Yeah, like this case, you can literally just like ball up and throw away. Like look at that. That shows you how thin it is. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. It's fine. But yeah, it's, if you want a skin but you want a case instead that easily comes off, definitely check them out. I'll put links in the description below. So guys, that was the super long unboxing of my iPhone XS Max, my Apple Watch, some accessories. We had a lit time, I'm sure. I, this video could be an hour long. I have no idea, I have to edit it all together. iPhone XS Max is recording right there. It looks super good. I just cannot wait to test everything out. 
Obviously, it's kind of like an incremental upgrade from the iPhone 10. The biggest thing is the size, like 6.5 inches, the biggest iPhone yet. It's gonna be crazy to use this to fly my Mavic 2 Pro, so definitely check out for videos on that. And don't forget, I'm going to be making some like iPhone accessory videos with these accessories, maybe like a top five accessory, or maybe something about why you should get the um, USB-C charger. And I just realized that I can probably charge my AirPods using this accessory by just plug it, plugging it in. Is it charging? Yep. I don't know how often I'll do that, but the option's there if I need to. So guys, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you stayed this long. If you did, you have the patience of a saint or you have nothing else better to do, which I appreciate. If you have nothing else better to do, I'll put some videos right here for you to watch. Definitely check those out. If you need to subscribe, you can click my head right there. Have a great day. See you later. Bye.